Hey, I'm Mike with the Rev RV, and today we're going to talk about solar panels and batteries. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to try to answer some of the questions that are hard to answer on a broad spectrum. There's a lot of variables that can play a role in affecting the answer. And some of those questions are going to be where your solar power goes, how long your battery bank will last, how long it'll take your solar panel to charge your battery bank, and can you add an existing or another solar panel to your existing battery controller? Some of the things that can affect that is how large your battery bank is, are they deep cycle, your lifestyle, how much power you demand. So with this video, we're gonna give you the information that you need to provide all these answers for yourself. With all that being said, I'm by no means an electrician. Anytime you mess with electricity on your motorhome, it's always best to get with a certified electrician or go back to your dealership and they can assist you through the program. Let's dig into some of the information so we can figure this out. And so the first question, how does your solar power work? Where does the power go first? And essentially, no matter what option you have, you got your 100 watt solar panel or you have the 265 watt solar panel, all the power coming from the solar panel will go to your house batteries first. The house batteries take priority over the chassis batteries. And now when your house batteries reach 13.2 to 13.4 volts, we have a thing called a battery isolation manager. Don't have to worry about what that is. It's basically a electronical device that says, hey, the house batteries have a good charge on them. Let's take some of that power and we'll transfer it to the chassis batteries. And what that's doing is just giving you optimal performance um, of your solar panel. All of the power that it produces, we're putting into our batteries. So again, house batteries take priority over our chassis batteries in this situation. The next question is how long your battery bank will last. And there's a mathematical equation, it's easy, that we'll figure out and we can put plug that in and figure out exactly how long our battery banks is going to last. And to get that information, we need to go to our batteries and look on the label and get how many amp hours they are. For our example, we're going to use a battery bank of six six volt batteries at 225 amp hours. Okay, as we stated, we're using six six volt batteries at 225 amp hours each. Now we're operating a 12 volt system, so we have to strategically wire the batteries together to provide that 12 volts that we need. In order to do that, we're going to wire them in series. When you wire them in series, it adds the voltage but leaves the capacity the same. So what we're going to do is wire these two batteries, these two, and these two. So what that's going to do is give us basically three 12 volt sets. And now we want to grow our capacity. Just like a bigger fuel tank, the more fuel we have, the farther we can go. The larger amp hours we have, the longer our batteries are gonna last. So we wire them in series, or I'm sorry, parallel, and now that's gonna increase our capacity, but it's gonna leave the voltage the same. So we take these batteries that are 225 amps, add these ones, now we have 450 amps, and then add the last set which gives us 675 amp hours. The last thing I like to do to this number is convert it to watt hours because it's so much easier to use. Because when you think about it, you got a 60 watt light bulb, you got a 100 watt light bulb, so it relates to, at least it relates to me a lot easier. In order to do that, the only thing we do is multiply our amp hours times our voltage, which is 12. And that comes out to 8,000. 100 watt hours. And there's one last thing I like to do as well is figure out what's a safe range to use. With our deep cycle 6 volt batteries, we can use 80% of the charge without damaging the batteries. Batteries do not like to be depleted 100%. So we need to figure out what 80% of our 8100 watt hour battery bank is. In order to do that, we just multiply it by 0.8, which is 80%, and that gives us 6,480 watt hours. And now that's the number 
we're going to use for everything else. So how long will your battery bank last? In that simple math, we know we have 6,480 watt hours that we can safely use. Now the only thing we need to do is divide our draw. Basically, how much power we're requesting, how, many, how much power the appliances we are using is requiring. So if we're using a one two watt LED for easy numbers, the only thing we do is we divide 6480 by two. That gives us 3,240 hours that we can use our battery bank. If we are using a, let's say a 100 watt light bulb, we simply divide it by 100. And that gives us 64.8 hours that that one 100 light bulb will run for. So basically go through your appliances, find out what you're nest or using, how much your TVs uh, draw, how much power they need, how much power your lights, whatever else you want running, and then divide it by your total watt hours and you'll know exactly how long your battery bank's gonna last. Now that we know how long our battery bank lasts, the next question is, how long will it take my solar panels to recharge my battery bank? We're gonna use the exact same battery bank that we were using in the previous example, uh, six, six volt, 225 amp hours for a total of 6,480 watt hours that we can safely use. We're gonna say that we have a 265 watt solar panel. And in order to figure out how long it's gonna to take to recharge that, we take our watt hours that we want to replace. So if we use all of our usable watt hours, the whole 6,480, the only thing we do is we divide that by 265 because that's how many watts we have recharging. And that number is 24.5 hours. So if we use all of our usable power, it's gonna take 24.5 hours of sunlight to recharge them batteries. Now there's one curveball in there Typically, a solar panel is only going to output 70% of its max rating. So 265 watts is our max rating. So more realistic number, we need to times or multiply that by 0.7 to give us 70%. And that number is 185.5. So now if we want a more realistic number about how long it'll take to recharge that battery bank, we need to take our 6480 and divide that by 185.5 and that number is 34.9 hours. And now again, we need sunlight to charge that. And the reason why it's taking so long is because we're using a large battery bank, which is good. And a slow charge is what you want because if you're, char if you're recharging your batteries faster than they can handle it, that's another way to really shorten the length of your battery life. On to the last question. Can I add another solar panel to my existing solar controller? In order to do that, you need to figure out how much amps your solar uh, controller can use. So just go out to your basement, your luggage compartments, look in the electrical one. You'll usually have one that says Jamboni solar controller and it'll say right on it, 30 amps. And the, in this type of system, for our example, we include a 30 amp solar charger. So let's say you opted in to get the technology package. You got a 265 watt solar panel. And divide, to figure out how many amps that is, you just divide that by our operating system, which we know we're using a 12 volt system. And that is gonna give you 22.1 amps. So let's say you want to add another 265 watt solar panel. That's going to be a total of 530 watts. We divide that by our 12 volt system, which is 44.1 amps. Now you're probably thinking, Mike, you just said I have a 30 amp solar charger. Well, remember back in the previous examples, typically a solar panel is only going to put out 70% of the max output. So the max rating is 530. So we're actually putting out about 70% of that. So instead of using 44.1 amps, we're using 70% of that. So take that 
times it by 0.7 to figure out 70%, and that gives us 30.9 amps. And after checking with our vendors, that is totally acceptable for a 30 amp solar charger. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much with all that information. Now every system is different, so that's why it's hard to answer that question in a broad spectrum. So now we give you the information to figure out what your system can handle. And if you need any help, I'm sure your local dealership will be more than uh, welcome to help you out. If you found this more techie videos useful, hit the thumbs up button, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and use the comment section below if you got any questions. Thank you.